Hello friends and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some simple tricks to make your home look a little more upscale and expensive. I think sometimes we think in order to have a luxe looking home, we have to have a luxe budget, but the truth is you can make some little tweaks and changes to make your own home feel as though it's more high end without spending tons of money. Let's do this. Okay, so my first hack that I really love is to remove packaging from your home. We all have different brand packaging around our home, things like cleaning supplies, cooking supplies, hand soaps, that sort of stuff. And a really simple upgrade is to swap this out for brand free bottles and sprays. So I have these really nice glass amber bottles that I got on Amazon for really affordable and I swapped out the cleaning supplies that I always have out in my kitchen sink for this neutral set. It's just such a simple, easy swap that makes the room look so much nicer and put together. Instead of having these bright, bold packaging that the companies use for marketing, busying up your room, you have a nice, clean, cohesive set. Another place that this idea works really great is the bathroom. Swap out your hand soaps for a neutral bottle. This also works really good in pantries as well. You can swap out some of the endless bags and boxes for a matching set of bins or storage containers. Another place that you can upgrade by just using like a cohesive pattern is your spices. Spices always tend to look a hot mess because they're different sizes and shapes and colors. And if you cook a lot, you need a good handful of different spices. So I bought this set of mini glass bottles that actually came with the labels and just quickly switched out my spices. And now it looks so much more clean and put together. This was such a simple switch and I can't tell you how much of a difference it made. Plus now next time when somebody comes over to cook in my home, they're gonna see my spices and be like, wow, wow, Callie really has it together. Look at her spices. And who doesn't wanna impress hypothetical visitors with their organized spices, you know what I mean? No, I'm just kidding. Don't organize your spices for hypothetical visitors. Do it for you. Trust me, you deserve it. And this project legit brought me so much joy. All right, moving right along, a big culprit to why your home may look a little less upscale is clutter. Now, I'm not preaching minimalism here. Not that there's anything wrong with minimalism. I think it's great and beautiful. I just personally am not a minimalist. I have books and artwork and stuff in my home. And yes, Marie, whatever your name is, it does all bring me joy. But the key is not not having anything because for most of us going totally minimalist is gonna be really hard. But it's just about keeping your home tidy and well organized even with your stuff. You could walk into the same exact home, like a clone of the same home, but if one was tidy and clutter free and the other one had piles of stuff and excess items on the table, it would feel less expensive and less nice, even if the two houses were identical. So it's just about making sure that all of the things you own have a place that they belong so you can easily put them away. It's about not keeping piles of clutter out and actively working on putting things away where they belong and they need to go. And if you need some decluttering help, I will link two videos down below. One is my decluttering hacks video with tons of great decluttering tips. And the other one is my secrets to how I stay clutter free. And these secrets may not be what you think they are. All right, on the topic of being clutter free, I find one of the biggest items always cluttering up my space is extra paper. And I'm actually in the process of making an entire video all about how I declutter the paper in my life, but I figured I'd share one of my best with you for receipts. You want to get in the habit of immediately storing away receipts that you need. I have a spot right in my kitchen that I can put them the minute I get home so that they are stored and saved. And then any other receipts you want to go right in the trash so they are not laying around and cluttering up your space. Wait, 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 freeze! Before you throw those receipts away, there's always something I tell you guys to do with your receipts before you chuck them, and that is to make sure you're scanning them into your Fetch Rewards app first. Unfreeze. So Fetch Rewards is a super easy to use uh, free app where you earn rewards on literally anything that you buy. I've shared this app with you guys a ton in the past and for a long time it was mainly just for grocery receipts, but it now works for pretty much anything and everything, including Amazon purchases. So you scan any receipt or e-receipt right from your phone, earn points, then redeem those points for hundreds of rewards like Amazon and Visa gift cards. Now, since Fetch is cool enough to sponsor another one of my videos, I have a great promo for you guys just for But First Coffee viewers. Use the code BFCOFFEE and get 3,000 points when you scan your first receipt. So just download the app totally for free, 
Use my code and then you get 3000 points when you scan your first receipt. Moving right along, another great way to make a big difference is to switch out the hardware on cabinets or furniture in your home. This is really great for less expensive furniture to make it feel more high end. So an example is in my daughter's nursery. We have an Ikea dresser. Obviously it wasn't super expensive. I think it was less than $200. And instead of going for the standard knobs, which were fine, but definitely made it feel a little bit cheaper, I swapped it out for these leather door poles that I got for about $25. And it's a huge upgrade to this dresser for not a lot of money. So a really easy way to upgrade some furniture or cabinetry in your home is just to swap out the hardware. All right, another great tip for making your home look more expensive is actually a way to swap out something that makes your house look less expensive if you have any of those like ugly thermostats or electrical boxes sometimes houses have things like these in really inconvenient places and depending on the cost or if you're just renting you can't always move these things around I found you can actually just get really creative with how you cover them up in our last rental house we had this big ugly thermostat in the wall right when you walked in the house it was like the first thing you saw so a really simple way that I fixed this was I just hung a hat over it and then I made this into a gallery wall I know it's like a small simple thing but it immediately made our entryway feel finished instead of looking like this big ugly thermostat wall when you first walked in the house. Next really simple way to make your home feel more expensive is to bring in living plants or flowers. When anytime you're anywhere like sort of high end, a really nice hotel or a really nice restaurant, they always have fresh flowers. So that's gonna make your house feel more elegant or bring in some house plants. Now, guys, let me tell you, I'm no green thumb. I kill a lot of plants. I cannot keep a garden alive to like save my life, but I have found a few very low maintenance house plants that even I can handle, and if I can handle them, you can handle them too. So do a little Googling, find the right house plants for you. I typically like to search things like low maintenance house plants and then look for one that's gonna do well in that area of my home. So if it's a room that gets low light or it gets lots of good natural light. And on that note, if you're gonna have house plants, go ahead and upgrade them to slightly nicer pots than the ones they came in. Just don't leave them in the cheap plastic bins they came in or you're gonna defeat the purpose. So take your plants, upgrade them into slightly nicer looking um, pots, and it's just going to make your house feel a little bit more luxurious and nice. One of my favorite little tricks for making a space look better is to step back and take a photo of the space. Really often when we live somewhere, we kind of become blind to things. We become clutter blind to excess clutter that we don't need or old outdated decor. So step back, take a photo of the space and then sit down and look at those photos. Often certain things will like jump right out at you as not looking as good or not looking as nice when you look at it as a photo as opposed to just looking at the space. And if you still need some additional help, this is great because you can take those photos, send them to a few good friends and ask them if they could change one thing about that space to make it look better, what would they do? Or another great way to phrase the question is you could send them the photo and say, hey, if you could keep one thing in this room and get rid of one thing in this room, what would it be and why? And this will sort of just help you start to like look at the room a little bit different and decide what things maybe are outdated, what things are maybe cluttered, what things don't need to be there. You can make some little tiny tweaks to make the room look better. Okay, for my next trick, this is something I used to be so guilty of and I've gotten a lot better, but it is to stop stocking up on little budget items for your home and instead put away that money to make big, bigger, nice purchases. So like I said, this is a mistake I used to make all the time. I would buy a lot of smaller items for my home, a new throw rug here, some new pillows here, a little home decor accent here, different side table because it was on sale. These were purchases I felt comfortable with because they weren't too expensive and I thought these little things would make a difference in my home's appearance. And don't get me wrong, sometimes just a few really small items can make a difference in a space. But often, all of these little purchases just ended up making my space look kind of more cluttered and mismatched, not in a cohesive way, because I was buying things more on price point or because it was in the clearance section, as opposed to buying it because it matched the style of my home or because I actually needed it in the space. So my thought process now is I tend to avoid these little purchases of getting things because they're on sale or because they're a really good deal. And I just put that money away instead. And then that way when I see something that I really need or would look really, really perfect in my space, I can purchase it even if it's not in the clearance section. So a really great example of this, if you follow me on Instagram, I brought you guys along on the process of buying my new secretary desk. I have this little corner in my room that really needed a space where I could work. And I wanted to get a secretary desk because if you don't know, secretary desk, it kind of just looks like a bookshelf almost, but it has a hidden piece that pulls out so you can sit and work at it. So it's a really great solution for having an office-y type space in a smaller home. But when I was searching online, I didn't really love any of the secretary desks that I found. A lot of them looked cheap, they didn't match 
match my style. I could have got one for a lot cheaper, but I decided to wait it out, not buy something cheaper, and keep my eyes peeled for a vintage piece instead. It was a little bit pricier because I had waited and not just bought like other little mismatched pieces of furniture. I could sort of splurge on this piece. Now I have the perfect piece of furniture, it matches my style. It's super versatile. It works perfectly in the space for what I needed. It serves the purpose I needed. It matches my style and it is a long-term piece that I probably will have for my entire life. All right, my last and final trick is to fold things in your home better. Anytime you're anywhere like high-end, like a really nice clothing store or a fancy hotel, things are folded nicely. So doing the same thing in your home is going to make you feel like you're somewhere more high-end. So an example is if you have somewhere the towels are out, they probably look something like this. If you're like me, you just kind of like kind of fold them and shove them there. But if instead you fold them like spa towels, suddenly you're going to feel like you're at a nice pool of a nice resort. So personally, I like to learn all of my folding tricks from this woman, Melissa, on TikTok. She is hilarious and her folding tips are really good. I will link her TikTok down below. So anyways, I learned how to do a lot of my folding from her. So to fold spa towels, you actually start by folding one corner over, then fold the whole thing lengthwise, like, like a hot dog, like the hot dog fold, and <laughs> flip it over. Then starting at the straight end, you're just gonna roll it up, roll it as tight as possible because it's gonna hold the roll better this way. Then when you get to the end, you can take the little corner that's left over, tuck it into the top, and bam, spa towels. These look so much nicer displayed in my bathroom than just like a sad attempt at a regular fold. Another place that you can use nice folding to make um, a space feel a little bit more upgraded is your closet or your dresser. Raise your hand if sometimes the clothes in your closet and your dresser look like this. Instead, try using some of these folding techniques. All right, let's fold some sweaters. So first up, a basic way to fold them. You start with the back of your sweater and then you're gonna fold both arms straight across. Basically, you wanna fold the arms so that it's nice and aligned with the torso part of your sweater. Then you're going to fold each side in, basically folding in the shoulder width of your sweater. And then you're just gonna fold up from there for a nice, perfect fold of a sweater every time. Another way to fold sweaters and or sweatshirts that have ribbed bottoms, this is a great way to fold them a little bit smaller and really good for dresser storage. This time you're going to start with the front of the sweater. You're gonna fold the arms of the sweater again, equal to the torso, but this time in an X shape across the sweater. Then when you fold the sides in, you're gonna fold in a little bit more because you're going to be making a smaller fold. Then again, you're just going to fold from the top down, but this time you're going to be able to tuck, tuck the top section into the ribbed part of the sweater, which is gonna help it sort of hold its shape. Again, this is why it's so great for dresser storage or also really good if we were packing a suitcase. Lastly, let's fold an oversized cardigan. If you're like me, I have a ton of these in my closet and I've always found them impossible to fold until now. We're gonna use basically the same method we used for the blue sweater, but we're going to start from the front of the cardigan instead of the back, because I find if you flip it onto the back, that's where things sort of fall apart with cardigans, because you can't align where the opening of the cardigan is, and that's where things get messy. Get the opening laying flat and laying aligned, then you're just gonna fold in the two arms, fold in the two sides, and then fold up from there. All right, my friends, that does it. That was some of my favorite little tricks I like to use around my home to make it feel a little more, I don't know if expensive is even the right way to like describe this, but just like to feel a little more luxurious. It's like little tips from places like nice hotels and resorts that you can do in your home without spending a lot of money to make it feel a little more high-end. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If this is your first time landing on my channel, I hope that you will hit subscribe before you go. Turn on the little bell notification. You'll get notified every time a new video goes live. And if you're not, make sure that you follow me over on Instagram. I share a ton more life hacks and like budget friendly stuff over there on stories and in my posts and in reels and all of that good stuff. As always, thank you so much for stopping by and watching and I will see you all in my next video.